through example number eight with you guys here as well. Okay, example number eight, part A. We want to find a quadratic equation that has roots 3 plus square root 2 and 3 minus square root 2. Okay, now there's a, there's a few ways that you can do this. The first way is, well, if you know these two are your roots, you can use factor theorem and go p of x is equal to x minus 3 plus square root 2 times x minus 3 minus square root 2. You can totally do that. I wouldn't recommend it. It's quite annoying. I don't like doing big algebra kind of questions where I have like 15 lines in order to get a nice question. There's a much simpler way that uses the roots, sum and products of roots that we've been looking at. What we can do is we can go, well, let our roots alpha be equal to 3 plus square root 2, for example, and beta be equal to 3 minus square root 2. We have two relationships that we can use using the sum and products of roots. So we, are, we know that alpha plus beta is equal to negative b over a. What are b and a? b and a are just the coefficients of my polynomial, of my quadratic. So what I can do is I can use my sum of roots and that will actually give me my b coefficient. My coefficient of b. Coefficient of x. Now for this question, what we can do is we can just, okay, let, we'll let a be equal to 1. Because that's just the leading coefficient. We can change that and shift that however we like. It's just that we were more interested in our coefficient of our other terms. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to go, okay, let a be equal to 1. So we know alpha plus beta is just going to be equal to negative b, my coefficient of x. We've also got a relationship that uses the product of our roots. So let's have a look. I've got, I'm just also going to move this down a bit. I've got alpha times beta is going to give me, well, it's usually negative c over a, but because we're letting a be equal to 1, this just ends up being negative c. So let's find what alpha plus beta are, is and alpha times beta is, and then we'll actually be able to just put that back into our quadratic. So let's do that. So alpha plus beta. Alpha plus beta is equal to, well, I'm just going to have 3 plus square root 2 plus 3 minus square root 2. Okay? So I'm going to have 3 plus square root 2 plus 3 minus square root 2. The 3s will add, so we've got 6, and the 2 square root 2s will cancel. So I've got alpha plus beta is equal to 6. So the sum of my roots is equal to 6. So therefore, b is just going to be negative 6. If you have a look, this was, oh, and this is wrong. This is just negative b. So I've got b is equal to negative 6. Okay, the second part is the product of roots. The product of roots. So I've got alpha plus times beta is equal to c. Now, I made a mistake earlier. It shouldn't be negative c. It should be positive c. Don't make that mistake. Do as I say, not as I do. Okay, so alpha times beta is just going to give me the coefficient of the constant term. So here I'm going to have 3 plus root square root 2 times 3 minus square root 2. Now this is one of those special special expansions that we did in class. It's the difference of two squares. So this will just end up being 3 squared, which is 9, minus square root 2 squared, which is just 2. So we end up having 7. So therefore, c is equal to 7. Now you might be like, also, oh, what do I do with this information? I'm glad you asked. What we can do this information was we can go well therefore our polynomial or our quadratic is just going to be we've got x squared it's going to be let me write this out properly it's going to be a x squared x plus c is equal to zero that's what our quadratic equation is going to look like so what we're going to do is we're going to substitute our values of a b and c that we found up above into this equation we let a equal to one so i'm just going to write x squared here so 1a squared, 1x one squared is just going to be x squared. I'm going to substitute my value of b in, so I've got negative 6 here. So I'm going to have minus 6x squared. And I've still got my value of c. My value of c is over here. c is equal to 7 plus 7, and that's equal to 0. So that's my quadratic equation that I'm looking for. So here when I'm trying to solve, uh, what's it called? When I'm trying to um, use my, I can use my roots and, uh, and use the sum of roots and the product of roots to actually help me find the coefficient of the quadratic that I'm actually in, uh, having a look at. So I can actually do the reverse process as well. This is what this question helps show us. Okay, so that's this first part. Okay, part B. And excuse me, I'm just going to 
scroll out for a bit and just get myself a little bit more space. I have another question that I'm going to have a look at with you a little bit later. So here I go. I'm just going to do another one just for good measure. Okay. Let's have a look at part B. Okay. So part B tells us if alpha and beta are the roots of this quadratic here, 2x squared minus 6x plus 1 is equal to 0. We want to find these different things. Okay. So let's have a look. I'm just going to write B. I'm just going to write our quadratic equation here just so that we have it available for us. Okay. So 2x squared minus 6x plus 1 is equal to 0. So that's our quadratic. Okay. So as I did before, I'm first. the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just actually going to lay, figure out what my alpha my a, b, and c values are. So a, b, and c are just our coefficients of our of our quadratic. So let's go through. a is just a coefficient of my x squared term. What is that? Well, if you have a look, it's just a 2 in front of my x squared. So I'm going to have a is equal to 2. b is the coefficient of my x term. So that's just my negative 6. Negative 6. And c is just my constant term, that positive 1 over here. Okay, so a is equal to 2, b is equal to minus 6, and c is equal to 1. Okay, so using this information, I'm going to go off to the side here, and I'm just going to go through each part. So the first part we want to find is alpha plus beta. What was the relationship between the for the sum of roots? The sum of roots was minus b over a. Minus b over a. So here, I'm just going to substitute my values of b and a in. So it's going to be minus negative 6 over 2. Minus negative 6 over 2. Okay. So when I simplify that, negative 6 over 2 just gives me negative 3. And because of that negative sign out the front, this just ends up becoming positive 3. So here, alpha plus beta is equal to positive 3. Okay. That's the first part. That's my product, sum of roots. The second part I'm going to do over here, I want my product of roots. What's the relationship for the product of roots now? The product of roots is just C over A. Don't make the mistake I made earlier. It's not negative C over A, it's positive C over A. So here, all I'm going to do is substitute my values in again. So here, I'm going to have C is 1. That's the coefficient of my constant term. And A is just 2. So here, for my final answer, I'm just going to have alpha times beta is equal to a half. Okay, now the third part is a little bit trickier. The third part is a little bit trickier. I'm going to do it over here because of all the information that I have on the screen already. A alpha squared plus beta squared. Now just remember, alpha squared plus beta squared is not, so this is not equal to a plus b or squared. You're not just squaring alpha plus beta squared. If you remember, when we did this expansion in advance, that actually gave me alpha squared plus 2 alpha times beta plus beta squared. So if you have a look, those two are not the same thing. We actually have this extra 2 alpha beta term that we, want to, we don't want in my equation here. So that's not actually the same. So how are we going to find alpha squared plus beta squared? I don't know what my roots are. I don't know... I can't just square them and just figure them out. So how do I do this? Now, this is where actually doing this expansion over here is a little bit nifty. I'm going to write it underneath just so you can see. And I'm going to do this in a different color so we can make expansion. So note, when I do alpha plus beta all squared, it gives me alpha squared plus two alpha beta plus beta squared. If you notice in my expansion here, I actually have alpha. I'm gonna. I'll do this in a different color. I'll actually highlight it. I've actually got alpha plus beta. All we have, we just have an additional plus two alpha beta here. So if I just want an alpha squared and beta squared on this side, I can just move my two alpha beta to the other side. So by rearranging, I can actually get alpha squared plus beta squared, which is just the two terms here, is equal to alpha plus beta all squared plus 
minus, actually, because we moved it to the other side, minus 2 alpha beta. Now, this is more useful for us because we actually have, we have an expression for alpha plus beta. That was the sum of our roots. And we also have an expression for alpha times beta. That's our product of our roots. So if we're trying to find alpha squared plus beta squared, we can actually use this relationship that we have here, this expansion, to help us figure out what that is. And use our sum and products for roots, substitute them back into our equation here, and this will actually help us find what alpha squared plus beta squared is. So let's go back up. So we have that alpha plus beta will is equal to 3. So here in this first part, this is going to be 3 squared. I don't know why the color cha changed, but I'm fine. And we've got the product root, alpha times beta is a half, so that's going to be minus 2 times a half. So here, when I've got 1 alpha squared plus beta squared, that's just going to be 9 minus 1, which should give me 8. So here, this is a very important root expansion to actually be able to use. If I want to find what alpha squared plus beta squared, do not just square alpha plus beta. Do not do what's in the rose gold box. That is not going to be correct. If you do the rose gold box, you will not get the correct answer. So if I want to find alpha squared plus beta squared, what I need to actually do is I need to use alpha plus this line here. I need to use, oh, and if I can get my computer to work, oh, I need to use this expansion here. I need to use the fact that alpha squared plus beta squared is just my alpha plus beta all squared. But it's got that additional green term that I highlighted over here. This additional green term. So what I need to do is I need to subtract it from there and that will get me alpha squared plus beta squared. That's an important expansion that you need to be able to use in your question. Okay, so that's part B triple I. I'm going to go have a look at part C.